Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. So the S&P 500 rally seems to be failing momentum on this weekly chart is curling down as we've had one of the biggest bank failures since September of 2008, Silicon Valley Bank representing around $209 billion in assets relative to the Washington Mutual Bank. Moody's, the notorious bond credit rating business, has cut its outlook on the US banking system to negative as they see a rapidly deteriorating operating environment. We are entering an environment where all of a sudden the possibility of more bank failures is a reality once again for the first time since 2008. Again, showing you the size of the failure that we had a couple of weeks ago with Silicon Valley Bank against the bank failures that we had in 2008. These types of events tend to have a domino effect. You don't just get one bank collapse, you get a destabilization of the system. So in this video, we're gonna be diving into the 2008 financial crisis, see how things played out back then, what were some of the key events in this period leading up to the big drop, what was the market paying attention to, how quickly things developed, and more importantly, how we should expect the markets to react today, as we are possibly entering a period of financial instability where we need to be on the watch out for what could move the markets. If you are interested in this type of content, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We make these videos multiple times a week covering everything that's happening on the market and any opportunity that we may see. Of course, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoy this video. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, before we dive into this video, I have a surprise to announce to you guys. We are doing a 20% discount on all our memberships for St. Patrick's Day. It's only gonna last 72 hours, so make sure to take advantage of it. You guys know our mission at gameoftrades.net. We want to provide access to quality investment research to as many individual investors as possible. We have three goals. We want to make the service as actionable as possible, give you all the trades that we see, all the opportunities that we see on the market. We want to make it as direct as possible, making sure that you have access to all the information you need as quickly as possible and make all of that as financially accessible as possible. That's exactly why we're doing this discount. We know times are tough right now. They might get a whole lot tougher. So we want to give you a chance to subscribe to our service for the cheapest price that we can offer. So that's the announcement. Go take advantage of it. Now let's get back to the video. So what we're seeing right now is a collapse of the regional banking ETF, KRE. These are the banks that are in trouble, that people are fleeing. The ETF is absolutely collapsing. Now the FDIC made an announcement right here very quickly that it will protect all investors from the collapse of SVB. So that did trigger a nice bounce, but it seems the market is still very much concerned about what is happening in the banking sector. And even following the announcement from regulators, it seems that things are still rapidly deteriorating. So if we continue to see investors withdraw their money from the banks, despite this announcement, it could continue to spread very quickly. Even perfectly healthy banks can be at risk of bankruptcy because they do not have the money to pay everyone back at once. That's what's called a bank run. And that process back in the financial crisis began with a bank called Bear Stearns that filed for bankruptcy right here in July of 2007. Now this was far from the complete collapse of the financial system. You can already have a pretty good idea of the timeline from that first bankruptcy to the actual collapse of the market that we had in October of 2008. Now, of course, this was a much smaller bankruptcy than the SVB collapse, but nonetheless, it was a sign that things were deteriorating. The banking system was being destabilized. You had other banks at the time that were showing troubles like BNP Paribas in France, and that was very quickly actually followed by announcement from the Fed saying that downside risk to growth had increased substantially. So this was all happening in 2007. As the markets were forming a top, you can see in fact, following that announcement from the Fed, you had a massive rally on the S&P 500, taking the market back up to the all-time high of 15% run. And that's as the market started to price in easier monetary conditions. Now, keep in mind here, if I add the inflation rate here, you can't see it very clearly on this chart, but back here, inflation was at 2%. So the Fed wasn't fighting inflation here. They had plenty of room to ease monetary policy and adopt a very dovish tone to prop up the markets and reassure investors. Today, yes, inflation is coming down, but we're still at 6%. 
very, very far off from the 2% target that the Federal Reserve has. They have a lot more work to do in order to get inflation down. So already just starting out, the Fed is in a much tighter spot and probably can't adopt a too dovish tone. Now, if we fast forward a little bit, this is where it gets interesting because in late 2007 here, November and December, the Fed actually cut rates twice by 25 basis points. Look at the market's reaction to that. The market declined both times. So there's a lot of people out there saying as soon as the Fed is going to flip, you're going to get a bull run, you're going to get a bull market. That doesn't always happen when the economy is deteriorating. Simply having the Fed at your back is not enough to prop up the market. In fact, in 2008, the markets fell following those rate cuts. The financial system continued on deteriorating. You had insurance groups like AMBAC getting their ratings downgraded. In fact, you can see as that was happening, you had credit spreads that were rising. This is a measure of the risk in the financial system. Credit spreads right here throughout this period was rising, really showing you the mindset of the market back then. Yes, the Fed was cutting rates. Yes, monetary policy was easing. But at the same time, you had the financial system being destabilized and investors were pricing that in. This is one of the things that we're paying attention today. If we look at what credit spreads are doing today, they're turning up as well very violently. So it already seems to be a lot less gradual than what we had in 2008. What we're seeing today is quite a violent move up in the credit risk that we have in the market. The more this continues to move up, the more the market is expecting the Fed to step in very aggressively and just a simple pause is not gonna be enough, just like it wasn't enough in 2007. You then finally had the Fed step in more aggressively here in January 2008 with an intermeeting 75 basis point cut, triggering a nice rally, and then another one right here in March of 2008. So two back-to-back -back 75 basis basis point cuts. The Fed was easing monetary policy very aggressively here. And of course, that stabilized the market and it even triggered a nice bull trap here, the notorious 2008 bull trap. So it was only when the Fed really started to step in with enough force, enough conviction that the markets were calmed down for a period of time. And even during this bull trap, you had some bankruptcies that were telling you, well, things were still not going in the right direction. The financial system was still deteriorating. Rating. Yet the Fed right here in June of 2008 decided to keep its Fed fund rate at 2%. So they paused the easing cycle. You can see the market's reaction to that big move down on the S&P 500 following that announcement. Credit spreads that resume their move up, basically telling the Fed, hey, you're not doing enough here. The situation is worse than you think. Then, of course, in September, you had Merrill Lynch, Silver State, American International Group and Lehman Brothers all going bankrupt. And very shortly after those bankruptcies, you had the massive breakdown in the market. So surprisingly, yes, the market moved down uh, as these companies were going bankrupt, as they were announcing their bankruptcies. But it took a couple of weeks for the markets to actually understand that this was going to have massive repercussions on the economy, which of course it eventually did. And credit spreads right here as you had those announcements immediately started to spike much more aggressively. And of course, you can argue that the market was right, because if we look at the unemployment rate after these bankruptcies, well, the unemployment rate rose significantly. So this is ultimately what the market is pricing in. The fact that the unemployment rate is going to rise substantially as we had into a deep recession. So of course, today we've yet to see uh, how things are really going to play out. But if I have to give you a few takeaways, first of all, the market sometimes takes a little bit of time to understand how much real impact a bankruptcy is going to have on the economy. So perhaps SVB hasn't been completely priced in by the market. Credit spreads have been spiking very aggressively here and they're not yet showing signs of cooling down. The second takeaway is that the Fed stepping in and saying that they're pausing the rate hike cycle might not be enough to calm things down. If we see a deterioration of the financial system following SVB, if we continue to see bank runs, the fact that the Fed pauses its hiking cycle will not be enough to stop it. And the final takeaway from this study is also that we have inflation at 6%. So the market knows that the Fed's ability to step in aggressively early, which is what you need to do to stop a financial crisis, is very limited 
because inflation is still at 6%. Now, the final chart I wanted to show you guys was this chart of the yield curve against economic indicators, coincident economic indicators that really represent what the economy is doing today. This is a chart that I showed to the members on the site in a premium video to illustrate why we're positioning the way we are on the model portfolio that we have on the website. So it's the yield curve that's shifted ahead 12 months. So this chart makes the point that the yield curve predicts what the economy is going to look like 12 months ahead. And you can see throughout history, it's been very good at anticipating economic contractions a year or a year and a half in advance, and also exceptionally good at anticipating economic booms. Now, first of all, the yield curve is the most deeply inverted today since the 1980s. So if we pay attention to this chart, it almost guarantees that we are going to see a contraction in economic activity. And second of all, the yield curve have inverted in August of 2022. And we're currently in March of 2023. So we perhaps still have a few months left. But that's the direction that economic indicators are heading in. We're not even there yet. It's going to get a whole lot worse. And yet it seems the financial system is already having a very tough time with the current macro environment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it insightful. If you did, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.